Alright lads, welcome to another one of my War Thunder vehicle reviews. Today we're going to be doing something different. We're going to be taking a look at a rather low tier vehicle. This is the Chinu 2. It's a rank 3 battery rating 4.3 medium tank, located obviously in the Japanese tech tree. You can pick this tank up for the relatively low cost of 1,600 golden eagles, making it very affordable in my opinion. Great if you're just starting out the Japanese tech tree and want a solid, reliable, good little grinder. This tank basically has a big gun, there's no real other way to say it. A battery rating 4.3, it has similar ballistic characteristics to the Tiger 1's gun, giving you over 150mm of penetration. All this, as a battery rating of 4.3, is certainly nothing to be scoffed at. Like all other premiums, it will cost you 10,000 silver lines to put it in your lineup, and for the cost of an additional 210,000 silver lines, you can get the expert and ace qualification, with the ace costing 470 golden eagles. But at this low battery rating, it isn't necessary to, to get these, in my opinion at least. So, is it actually worth buying this tank? Well, that's what this video is all about. Stick around to the end of the video to find out. Anyway boys, let's jump straight into it. This tank is powered by an engine producing 240 horsepower, which is pretty low. But remember, this is a Japanese tank, meaning it has absolutely dick all armor. Probably because the most resistance Japanese high command thought they would get is a bunch of Chinese civilians armed with sticks. Anyway, the tank weighs 19.8 tons, and when combined with that vehicle's engine power, gives a tank a power to weight ratio of 12.1 horsepower per ton. This is pretty bad, there's no way around it, but a battery rating 4.3, it is certainly workable. For a reference for other players who are watching this video, it gives you around a similar level of mobility as a Panther tank, a battery rating 5.3 and 5.7 respectively. So, quite a heavy medium tank, but as you'll see shortly, this tank certainly isn't as armoured as a Panther. Anyway, the tank's top speed of 39km per hour going forwards and 8km per hour in reverse isn't amazing, but again, the Japanese tanks aren't famed for their mobility. Now, the weakest part of this tank in my opinion, the armour. Because those Chinese civilians may have had some rocks with them, the tank has a mighty 50mm thick of its armour in the frontal plate. Basically the lower frontal plate, top of the upper frontal plate, as well as the turret front is all 50mm thick, just short of 2 inches. Even at battery rating 2.0 that is pretty bad, and at 4.3 it's pretty much unusable whatsoever. But because there are lots of things on the front of the vehicle, such as the driver's vision port, the machine gun, the tow cable, you can get a surprising amount of bounces, especially if facing immature players. And if there's one thing that War Thunder has in abundance, it's moronic teammates. Anyway, as I said, the thickest armour of this tank is 50mm thick, and the remaining armour plate is 25mm thick, but it is very well angled. But it's certain to say that this tank certainly isn't a bruiser or a brawler. You can't really be aggressive with it. Pretty much any penetrating round is going to one shot kill you. That's made even worse by the crew configuration. This tank is a crew of five men with a gunner commander and loader in the turret and a driver and assistant machine gunner in the hull. The same way the Imperial Japanese Navy like to cram its sailors into ships as tightly as possible, the Japanese army must have also taken a similar suit. These guys are cramped in there like sardines. So pretty much any penetrating round from a fairly large calibre gun is going to send them all to Japanese heaven, which I don't actually know what it's called. Anyway, enough of all the negativity, let's move on to the positive, the gun. The tank is armed with the 75mm Type 2 Model 2 cannon. It comes with 48 rounds of ammunition, with no first age or ammunition rack, meaning all your reloads will be a similar speed. Notably for a tank of such a low battery rating, the tank has a pretty good vertical guidance characteristics with minus 10 degrees and plus 15 degrees of gun elevation and depression. Because of this good gun depression of minus 10 degrees, as well as the tank's rather tall stature, you can look over and shoot over quite high objects, especially rocks and other types of concealment. This is pretty good tactically, but remember, your turret armour is pretty bad, so don't try and go a hole down and try and trade shots for example, because pretty much everything you will face will be able to pen you. The tank also has a pretty terrible targeting speed of 14 degrees per second, which combined with the rather poor mobility, does make the tank feel even more sluggish. 
as you struggle to swing that gun around onto a target quickly. And because of all the speedy little bastards at low tier, it can be a serious disadvantage in game. We also have two rifle caliber machine guns, one mounted coaxially, and one on a pinto mount fired by the commander. But let's get on to the fun stuff, the ammunition. First of all, we have the Type 90 high explosive round. Because it's only a 75mm gun, the explosive effect isn't particularly amazing. I'm sure it was substantial at mowing down Chinese civilians, but in War Thunder, you can expect significantly harsher resistance. But when you encounter said resistance, you have two other types of shell available to you. The first is the Type 1 ABHE, or Armor Piercing High Explosive. It's worth pointing out, however, this does not have a cap or a ballistic cap, meaning it will struggle to penetrate angled armor, as well as maintain its velocity at longer ranges. To put it simply, this gun is very powerful, but uses quite old shells. Anyway, the Type 1 travels at 865 meters per second and contains 84.8 grams of TNT, giving it rather average post penetration damage. But where this tank really does shine though is in its penetration. At a range of 500 meters, you can penetrate 133 millimeters of armor, and at 10 meters, that is 149 millimeters of armor, similar to the Tiger 1's 88mm gun. We then also have the Type 4 Q round. This travels at the same speed and has less explosive filler with only 80.6 grams, but it gives you slightly more penetration. Again, at the same range of 500 meters, our penetration increases by around 4 millimeters to 137 millimeters of armor. Because the increase in penetration is so negligible, I'd stick to using the Type 1 APHE. That is a true stock round, meaning it costs you nothing to fire, and it also has more post penetration damage due to the higher TNT filler. So in my opinion, despite the Type 4 technically being an upgraded shell, there's no real reason to use it. So, is it actually worth picking up this tank? Well, for the low cost of 1600 Golden Eagles, I'd say go for it. It's not the best premium tank in the game, and I'm not going to lie to you, the win rates of the low tier Japanese tech tree isn't amazing. Most players are playing the Americans, Germans, and the Soviets, so you very rarely have a good winning team of mainly Japanese vehicles. But if you are interested in playing the Japanese tech tree and having a little bit of fun at the same time, then I can't think of a premium vehicle that is better than this tank. It gives you similar levels of mobility and armor protection to all the other vehicles in the Japanese tech tree, while having a very punchy gun at a low battle rating. I usually take a few other tanks as well as a Zero into battle, with the Zero having a 250 kilo bomb. It basically gives you a guaranteed ground kill, and you can play out the cast roll or the cap roll combat air patrol and shoot down some enemy planes. Basically, great for low tier grinding. Anyway lads, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really does help out the channel grow. And if you really love what I did here today, consider becoming a channel member like Tomato Salad, Deborah LX, Just Someone, Destroyer1805, Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier and Lola Alfonsi. Thank you very much for becoming members lads, and I'll see you in the next review.